Hey guys, welcome back. Today we are going to do a complete beginner guide for setup at Solvo S Video Seven, including assemble, bed leveling, calibration, slicer setting, and more. We are going to dig into some of the detail on each steps. Also, cover some of the issues that I found and potential solution for it. As a period of making this video, S Video Seven is still new to the market. There are not many units being shipped. So I was not able to collect as much as the common issue that community has reported. Also, some issue that we are going to cover below may only appears on early production unit. With that being said, let's get started. Let's starting with the pre-assemble checking list. I'd like to mention some of the key points before you start assemble the printer. Checking list number one: wires. Check the wires under the printer bed. My unit was found a wire under the build plate somehow not tightened properly. When you print the bed, move on Y axis. The Y will catch on the build plate screw on this corner. Over time, it might break. Simple solution: just pull the wire down, and you are good to go. Also, just double check all the pre-assembled part and confirm all the wires are properly connected. Checking list number two: Y axis end stop. I found that there's an issue on the Y axis end stop. This injection molding part. Work as a y-axis belt tensioner. At the same time, it also serves a purpose of to stop the y-axis. However, I don't know if this belt tensioner on my unit was not installed properly, or it more looked like a design error to me. Every time when I try to remove the part from the build plate, it's easier for me just move the build plate all the way to the front, and then the build plate will be retained by the belt tensioner. Now. The printer itself under normal operation won't cause this problem, but it is there like a trap. It probably will catch some dummy like me. It could be simply fixed by changing the upper edge, like the bottom one. Since this assembly was made of injection molding part, it will take a lot of money to redo the mold. I'm not sure if they're gonna fix on the later patch, so I just designed a simple part to fix this. The STL file link is attached on the description below. Chicken list number three, gantry cooling fan. The gantry part cooling fan is mounted behind the x-axis. The part itself feels very cheaply made and brittle. You're supposed to be tighten those two bolts to prevent vibration. At the same time, be careful not to over tighten it. You may break it. The part cooling fan is extremely loud when it's power on. The noise level could go up to 77 decibel. Does it going to damage your healing long term? I don't know. Simply reduce the fan speed to 70 to 80 percent will greatly reduce the noise level and still maintain enough airflow to cool it apart for high speed printing. Now there gotta be a way to set an upper limit for the fan speed instead of changing fan speed on the touch screen every single print. I just didn't find it yet. I'll keep you guys updated or more simply replace it with a quieter fan. I am also working on designing a cover and trying to reduce the noise level. So far, many reversion has been made, and seems like I'm digging to rabbit hole. Chicken list number four, bed spacer. So we'll put the spring and adjustable nut bed mount as default setup and provide a solid mounting part. The solid mounting part that comes with a printer is made of solid polymer. There is no much room you can compress. I switched the spring adjust spacer to a solid mount from the beginning, since I am a lazy person and I want more hassle-free experience. However, the solid mount seems did not add up many values, at least for my unit. I can hardly get a good first layer across the entire printer bed, but I am more forgivable with my first layer stuff. As long as the part stays fine, I will be happy. But if you are decided to switch a solid mounting, a rubber mount will be better choice. If you have that in hand, it gives more room for you to make adjustments. Or if you have to switch the solid, be sure to check the height of all four polymers. In my unit, they are not at the same height. Checking list number five: build plate. As I mentioned on the checking list number four, there are two setup for bed mounting. I personally recommend use a spring and adjustable nut setup if you don't have a rubber space on hand. By using those setup, you will gain more control over each corners for the bed leveling. However, I found that the center of my build plate is higher than all four corners. Regarding which setup I am using, I got a very similar result on the bed mesh. It happens to another people too, 
So just keep that in mind. It could be happening to yours too, but it will still work fine as long as the value is not over the maximum limit of the ABL could compensate. Even though my value looks horrible, but it still works. Another thing. I tried so many times to gain a better bat mesh value. I actually found that the bat mesh gets better value if you are not preheating it. So the center part tends to be expanded more by the thermal energy. Maybe. Checking list number six anti belt latch knot noise. My anti belt latch knot sometimes make grinding noise during the Z axis travel. It is not bad and won't cause any damage, but it is annoying. I see some people put oil on the back clutch knot and eliminate the noise. I am not sure if you're supposed to be put lubrication on this setup, but it's up to you. Also, the bolt holding a coupler for the anti backlash knot supposed to be not fully tightened. If yours is too loose, you can tighten it a bit and be sure to leave some room for it to wiggle. Checking list number 7, POM wheel. The polymer on POM wheel will wear out very fast if you are consistently printing with a higher speed. Especially when it's new, you will find a larger amount of wear and debris on the gantry or on your table. It will get better after running for a period of time, but it is something that it will wear out quickly than solar speed printer. Also, the eccentric knot on Y-axis wheel are sliding up and down. It's rare for me, but I don't see the major impact on print quality. So just something to keep in mind. Let's move all the stuff out of the box. As you can see, all the components have been laid on the table. Make sure you get all the parts on your package. Pay attention that all the tools and small accessories are in the drawers. Let's start a symbol. The tools in the little drawers should be able to get the job done. But I would highly suggest to having a white right angle square to check during the process. Step 1. Marry the gantry to the base. Use 4 M5 45mm bolts. Make sure you are putting a spring washer on all bolts. This will make sure the bolt won't come loose during a vibration over time. Place the gantry assembly on pre-cut slot on top of a base. It is easier to move the printer to the edge of the table and insert a bolt. Hand tie two bolts on the side, then use the allen wrench to further tighten down. Don't fully lock it yet. Rotate to other side. Repeat the same procedures. Now we can use a right angle square to confirm the gantry it's 90 degrees respectfully to the base. I first place a square on the tabletop to confirm its level with the floor. Then place it on the top of the base. As you can see, it looks very good in the front, but as I move it closer to the gantry, the bubble is out of the center. I quickly noticed that the cover plate on the base is not fully tightened down. Anyways, I just go ahead, press down toward the base and bring a square to the gantry. It looks aligned to me. Repeat the same procedure on the other side. If you found no further adjustment needed, you can fully tighten the bolt. Step 2. Attach a screen holder. Use 3M4 10mm to attach a screen holder to the base. It is easier to put the bolt on Allen wrench than find the right hole for the bolt. Place two bolts on top. Screen case have a quick release lock on the back. Slide it down. Step 3. Place the extruder on carrier. Use 4 M3 times 8mm bolt. I found that it's easier to perform this step by standing behind the printer. This step might take a bit patient, as the bolts are hard to align with the spacers. Step 4. Mount gantry part cooling fan on the gantry. Use two M5 20mm bolt to bolt parts on. There are two pre-tapped holes on the gantry. Make sure you tighten both bolts, otherwise you'll encounter vibration issue later on. But don't over tighten it. The bolt housing is very brittle and easy to break. Step 5. Put filament holder on top of the printer. Place the front part of the filament holder down and apply some force downward. Find a hole and put M416 bolts on. Step 6. Connecting all the wires. Let's start with the filament runout sensor. Make sure you adjust the wire as needed. Confirm the bottom end of this wire won't be on the way of the x-axis copular. Connect the wire with a wire from the main board. Connect z-axis motor number 1, z-x motor number 2, power supply port to the screen, and a USB port. Release the cable roll. Be careful not cut through the wires. Finishing out X motor wire. K 
key fan goes against the cooling fan, ripping cable to extruder assemble. The cable retainer lock is a bit loose on my unit, but it should be fine. Use a zip tie to secure the cable on the anti bellash knot mounting plate. Also, use a zip tie to secure ribbon cable on the extruded metal ply. This will ensure ribbon cable won't slack down during the printing. Connect your power supply cord. Be sure you adjust the voltage setting according to your version before you start the printer. I also suggest not turn off the clipper screen by itself. Otherwise, you must unplug the power cord and turn it back on again. Let's get some basic calibration done. I did not include the input shaping as unnecessary before you did the ringing test print. Sovo had to calibrate this on the shop floor. If your ringing test result turned out good, it's not necessary to adjust it again. Step 1. Adjust eccentric knot and belt tensioner. Adjust the eccentric knot on extruder carrier. Use a wrench counter printer to adjust the eccentric knot on wheels. All three wheels should not be easily to move by your finger push, but it should not be over tightened where your hand could hardly move it around. The extruder should hold stable also. Adjust the belt tension on the X axis. You should feel consistent smooth travel without any empty step. Adjust the belt tension on the Y axis as well. Bed should be moved freely and should not be able to shaking. Adjust the eccentric knot on the Z-axis as well. The eccentric knot on the Z-axis were located inside the gantry frame. Confirm the wheel's motion after adjustment. Step 2. anti lash knot. Look at the anti lash knot. The bolt holding the copper with knots should not be fully tightened. Most likely you will not need to make any adjustment. But if you do need to make any adjustment, be sure to leave some room and not fully tighten it. As in most cases, the lead screw is not perfectly straight. The clearance on bolts will compensate those imperfections. Step 3. Gantry Leveling I print one part to check out the gantry leveling on the both side, even though there is a detail feature on this printer to compensate the high difference between the left and right. It will be always better if you can start with a better condition. I have one bed leveling video that covers both spring adjustable knot setup and a solid mounting setup. You can check out on the up corner. After bed leveling done, you can preheat the printer and insert the filament. I highly recommend start with the banshee that come with the printer and just check out if everything works alright. Next, print the ringing test file on a USB drive. Observe the quality of the print and determine if you need to redo the input shaping recalibration. Next, we can start slicing our own models. As I am always using the Prusa slicer, SV07 does not have a preset conf configuration on Prusa slicer at this point. I did not have a lot of experience playing around with the Clipper firmware, which I don't have a perfect configuration profile that I can start with. So I just use the SV06 configuration and change the bed size and change the G code favor to the Clipper under firmware setting. So I changed the starting and ending G code to the custom G code section. Otherwise, your command will not be recognized correctly on the clipper. Since the main selling point for this printer is speed, we could further boost the machine acceleration limit to a higher level. I have tested many different speed and acceleration settings with different models and filament on the review video. 250mm per second, 2500mm per second square is where I think the sweet spot for this printer to both meet the quality and speed demand. But it is not saying that that's the full potential of this printer. At this point, I'll suggest that to start with a 2500mm per second acceleration. Also, my start GCO or macro set a gantry cooling fan to match with the part cooling fan on extruder. So whenever the part cooling fan on extruder turn on, the gantry part cooling fan will turn on as well. Also, this printer has a Wi-Fi feature, so you could send a file through the web page instead of insert a USB drive every time. 
I think it should cover most of fund issue at this point. Feel free to leave questions and comments. I'll try my best to help you. Thank you for watching and happy printing.